If I say programmer, you're most likely to think of men hunched over beige keyboards typing away at inhuman speeds. And yet, not only is that not an accurate stereotype, but it also betrays the origin of computing. Because for everyone thinking computer science is a predominantly male occupation, in fact, short of engineering, there isn't really another occupation that is seen as more masculine, well, I have a surprise for you. Computing as we know it would not be here without a number of key women. And we're not talking three or four women either. In one computing project, all the workers were women back in the 1940s. And the Apollo space program also employed an unusually high number of women given the standards of that time in its computing part. So how did an occupation and industry so intertwined with the women of its inception become so male dominant today with just 17% of computer science grads being women? The whole thing about computing started thanks to one such pioneering woman, Ada Lovelace. She worked with Charles Babbage, some English guy who made the first computer, quote unquote, and it was her that came up with the idea that it could do more than just mathematical calculations. In essence, she took the concept from big chunky abacus to big chunky algorithm machine. But there's other women, many of them, that have made colossal contributions. For instance, the Wrens, the women of the Royal Navy Service, the acronym is WRNS, I know the acronym isn't perfect, but their work was revolutionary and perhaps one of the two big things to propel computing into the forefront of 20th century science. They worked on something called the Colossus Machine at Bletchley Park in England to decode German transmissions. The other event was the Manhattan Project. If all we remember from it is that it produced the atomic bomb there were many thousands of engineers, physicists, and mathematicians involved, including the human computers, in fact. These were wives of scientists in the Manhattan Project. They worked on the ENIAC and MANIAC-1 computers. These were big, hulking, room-filling monstrosities, and they tamed the beasts with calculations. Adele Goldstein, she wrote the first working manual for ENIAC, and she was one of the human computers working with that machine as well. Grace Hopper, she was known as the mother of COBOL. This is a programming language that was developed in 1959, and she led to the use of English language word instructions in programming, which inevitably allowed us to see those cool hacking scenes with lines of words. Joan Ball, she created the first computer dating service in 1964. This is why we can enjoy Tinder today. Swipe right on her contribution to humanity, right? So many countless others. From the women that created the first internet glossary, this is how we have .com, .org, .gov today, to the CEO and co-founder of Palm, who brought us the PDA, this is the granddaddy of the smartphone for those younger amongst us, and so many others as well. But how did we get from women being everywhere in computing to it becoming this boyish thing? One of the reasons was that first personal computers were pitched for gaming. This attracted male audiences, particularly with the games they first launched. The way they've been marketing since hasn't really helped either. Shooters and racing games were far less interesting for women, and since computers, since the 80s, have become almost intertwined with those two genres, the association stuck. We know for a fact that the shift happened in the mid-1980s, because the US in 1984 to 1985, 37% of all computer science students were women. So the gap was nowhere near as massive today when we're talking about, what, 16, 17%? It's likely that the marketing narrative has turned computers into something distinctly boyish. And if more boys than girls got exposed to computers as children and young adults, they would be more likely to experiment with them. This has less to do with innate differences than it has to do with the formative experiences in someone's youth. But even today, there are places where women aren't as much of a minority in computing. The Indian Lucknow Institute of Technology has more women than men in computer science programs and that's similar in universities in Malaysia as well. So what is more likely, that Indian, Malaysian and every other country's women are different? Or perhaps the places where the marketing narrative from the 1980s in the West hasn't taken hold? Women in computing doesn't sound like such a strange idea. The other big shift may have come from the mentality of 24-7 that we associate with coding and working with computers, that if you don't dream in code, you're not good enough. But the ultimate irony is that to be a good coder, you must look beyond just the code. The best coders are the ones that translate code into something usable. Still, there are some big initiatives to increase gender parity in computing, and for all the talk of women being less suitable for computing, history says otherwise. In fact, computing would probably never have gotten here without their contributions. The only question remains, who will be 
the pioneers of the next big thing in computing. As always, hope you liked this video. Let me know down below what you think. And if you loved it, go ahead and click the subscribe button. See you next time. Ciao.